Welcome to my kitchen. What's up guys? Welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. Once again, we are in my kitchen slash art studio. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to stretch your own canvas on a budget. If you are somebody that considers yourself more of a traditionalist when it comes to painting, if you like to use really high quality canvas or linen or just in general materials that are a little bit more expensive, this one might not be for you. If you're an artist trying to stretch your own canvases on a budget, or if you're a student trying to take painting classes, this is going to be a tutorial for you that can hopefully help you save a few dollars along the way. So if you have never stretched a canvas before, let's start with some of the basics. A canvas, when you buy it in a store, most craft stores, you can usually get an 18 by 24 inch canvas for about around $10. So your canvas is made up of frame and the actual material itself that's stretched over the frame. Now store-bought canvases, they're called that because the material stretched on them is canvas. That is what this material is. It's really tough, it's really, it's really, really strong. I'm not going to try to rip it just because it can be a little bit more expensive, um, but that's traditionally what canvas is stretched on. There are all different um, types of weaves of canvas. Usually the tighter woven it is, the more expensive it's going to be. A lot of people like to um, paint on linen as well. So what we're going to be using is a material called muslin, which if you are somebody who makes clothes or if you've ever seen an episode of Project Runway, uh, they usually use this muslin fabric to make a mop-up, a mock-up of a garment before they actually cut into their more expensive fabric. You can already see the light coming through that. It is a lot thinner than canvas. It is, it's not, it's lighter, it's not as heavyweight, it's definitely not as tightly woven. It's not going to be as strong. You can't pull it quite as tight, but it really helps out a lot as far as cutting costs. I think I've actually been stretching canvas with muslin for years. I think it works pretty well. It works well for my purposes. So as far as your frame goes, one trick I actually used a lot during school and I still do is if you save your canvases from a painting class, I took painting class in high school and college. Um, and I kept all of those frames, mostly because I didn't know what to do with them, but also because they weren't great and so I didn't want to give them to anybody. But you can cut the canvas off of your store-bought frame and reuse the frame. So this is one, I think this is just a Michaels canvas frame that I cut the canvas off of and today I'm going to restretch the frame. Now you'll notice with a frame like this, it has this bevel along the side. That is so when you stretch the canvas over it, you don't end up with this. This is a frame that I built. This is the most basic version of building a frame. You can build your own frame and bevel it. Um, I just usually don't have the tools to do that. Normally when I'm just painting something that's gonna go in my house, I don't usually mind the crease usually by the time you paint over it it's not that visible so it's not as bad but if that's something you don't like you can build your own frame and still create the bevel i have my muslin i'm going to use pre-cut and a staple gun that i believe is already loaded no it actually needs new staples so i will switch to a top view so you can see how i'm going to do that Okay, so I've got my frame. I'm ready to go ahead and start stretching it. I'm gonna lay out my muslin. Now, this is a little off camera, but I am flipping all of the edges over the frame to make sure that there's definitely plenty of room for me to pull 
the muslin and then um, staple it to the frame. It's a little long, so I'm cutting off the extra, and if you actually make a little snip and then tear it, you'll be sure to cut in a straight line. So now I'm ready to start stapling it, and you can see all those staples are left over from the previous one, but those won't really be in my way. You want to find a place in the center of the frame and put a staple through the fabric. And we're going to work down the sides eventually, but we're going to go one staple at a time on each side. And you can see that wrinkle in the fabric. I really want that tension to be present when I'm pulling the canvas. When I say canvas, in this instant, I mean muslin. That's just what it's called when you're, whatever you're stretching is the canvas. So I'm pulling as hard as I can without tearing it to really, really get that tension. That's really important. And stapling it on the opposite side. And if it sticks out a little, that's okay. You can just hammer it into place. Then I'm gonna turn it and do the same thing. Then flip it to the opposite side pull it really taut again, and then place another staple in the middle. Now I will repeat. So I've been having trouble with a couple of my clips, um, including the time lapse where I showed you how to staple this. So basically, I believe you saw me start in the center of each side putting one staple and then you rotate and you always want to stretch to the other side to create that tension. Then you're going to alternating sides, come down one side, it doesn't matter right or left, you just need to do the same on either side. So if you go to the right, you'll want to one staple at a time, rotate, rotate again and do that with each individual staple until you get to the corners then you'll go back down the other way always rotating to do the opposite side okay so now that we're at the corners this part gets a little bit trickier that's why it's really helpful that you have this stretched so taut when you start so that when you get to the corners all that's left is just this little bit of fabric now this especially with the muslin because it's so much thinner than canvas you have to be careful when you're stretching it that it doesn't tear over the corners different people are going to tell you that there are different ways to do a corner um, i'm just going to show you how i do it uh, basically the principle is to have this the fabric on the corners not have it all like bunched up over here that's basically the idea however you want to achieve that is up to you so you'll pull it tight if you pull it down here you have a better chance of not ripping it because you're not trying to pull from up here double fold with my corners just because I think it looks pretty. <laughs> I messed up here when I was trying to trim it so that you could see better, which now that I don't have the time lapse that doesn't matter. Um, so this one might be a little weird because it got cut a little short here. Trim this back a little bit. Um, I know some people will kind of tuck it down there and glue it. Um, I've seen people fold it under like that and glue it. How I usually just trim it because unless I'm giving it to somebody, I don't really care if this part looks neat on the back side. Now that this is stretched really tight like a drum, we are ready to prime it. Alright, gotta move 
all my cords out of the way. <laughs> Alright, so I don't have a stir stick. So I already did a fun little dance to shake this up, which I will spare you from seeing. Uh, you don't have to use one of these. I actually found one of these on the ground outside um, to open paint can. Oh, that is not shaking up at all. Okay. Well, either I definitely need to stir stick or I need to dance some more. Uh, but yeah, you don't. You can use. Um, I've used like the edges of these before to open it. Like you don't have to have a special thing. So this paint, uh, it is not white, but frankly, unless you want to use your gesso as your background, the color of it doesn't really matter. That's a little better. We can kind of stir that around with the brush. Uh, but this is just mismatch paint I bought at Walmart for $10 for this entire gallon. You can obviously get smaller cans if you're only trying to do one canvas, but this is really cheap for a can of paint and that's a really good investment considering both my partner and I paint. This is a really great deal for both of us to be able to prime canvases with. <laughs> Now the first layer, most of it honestly, is going to soak in, so I usually do not shy away from going pretty thick on the first layer. And it is now the time of day where this is just making a giant shadow. thing covered. That's usually when I will pick a direction. We're going to alternate directions in between layers to try to get this with the surface. I also will paint the sides. I usually only do a couple coats on the sides just because it's not as important. A store-bought canvas I think some of them I have had students show me that they like on the advertisement they like brag about having three coats of gesso on them uh, three is still not very many especially in store-bought standards when it's not very thick uh, store-bought canvas is not gonna be very smooth you can sand it down um, you can add your own layers of gesso on top or primer if you want but normally for a canvas like this even with the house paint which is thicker uh, I usually do like four minimum Okay, now I'm gonna let that dry for about an hour. So I am going to rinse this out some, but also wrap it up in foil so that I don't have to completely deep clean it in between layers just to get it messy again, but that way it won't dry out. I'm going to put this back on the can so it won't spill if it gets knocked over, and I'll be back for this in about an hour. Okay, I just finished sanding the fourth coat of paint on here. You can still see some of the brush lines. Those are pretty hard to fully make those go away, but when I touch it, it's really smooth to the touch. Um, it does loosen up a little as time goes on and as you put the paint coats on. That's why it's so important to stretch it really tight from the start. Um, you can, as you are stretching it, spray water on the back to help smooth that out but this is pretty good it's not bad now i've got a couple of canvases and i'm all ready to paint 
I'm losing my light. The sun's going down outside and it's turning a fantastic cheap apartment yellow in here, but it matches my canvases. So there's that. <laughs> um, well, I hope that you found some of this information helpful. This is a pretty basic canvas stretching demo. Um, it's not super complicated, although you can, like anything else, um, kind of geek out over it and go for nicer quality materials or get really fancy with your bevels on your stretcher bars. This is just something I wanted to provide for beginners or anybody that's working on a budget. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.